So today I'm going to show you how to enable Blur within Compton. I say Compton instead of Pycom for a very good reason and we'll get to that very shortly. So if you're new to the channel you know what to do and let's jump right into it. So the first thing I want to go over is just why I said Compton. So there exists two main forks of the original Compton project which is a fork something else which is a fork something else but that's not too important to this video. There's two main forks so that's what I wanted to get it out of the way. So we have the Pycom fork and then we have try ones fork. So the PyCon fork is the main fork that's available in most of the repos. I think in pretty much everything that has Compton that became PyCon, this is the fork that it's using. But there exists another fork which actually enables a much better blur method than PyCon does. So the problem that PyCon has is it has a blur method in it, but it doesn't work on a lot of hardware and it is really, really CPU and GPU intensive. So I've tried it on my system and it straight up makes my computer completely unusable. There is a noticeable delay, like I mean a half second delay with moving my cursor around and that's not usable. So there's this try one fork that exists that implements a much better blow method, the uh, Kawase blow method. I don't know the actual details of the blow method itself. All I know is that the CPU impact or GPU impact is about as noticeable as running transparency. So if you can run transparency fine, you'll be fine with this. Now the one problem with this is that it's quite old. Like the most recent update is about two years ago. But there is an effort to get this rebased into the main project. So you've got this fork right here, which is for a dual Kawase method. This is being updated fairly recently. And if you want to have a read about this, come have a look at this thread. I'll put it in the description down below. It talks about the two devs basically going back and forth with each other, trying to explain how they're going to get it rebased into the main project. Because in the end, everyone just wants a better piece of software. And if they can get blur within the main project, then I guess that's going to be much better in the end. So now all that background stuff's out of the way, let's actually jump right into what I want to do. So the first thing you're going to want to do is actually install this fork. Obviously you could install the newer one, but on Arch at least, there's no AUR package for the newer dual Kawase branch, but I will explain how to use this one if you do want to use it. You'll just have to go and actually install it yourself. There's details in here about how to install it, but you have to actually go and compile everything yourself. This one, the older one that's from like seven years ago, there is an AUR package for this one. So if you're on Arch, you can download that. So it is just this one right here. So this Compton Try One Git. So obviously you can install this however you want. I'm going to just go along with yay, just because that's what I've been using recently. So yay-s Compton-Try One Git. So if you've never used yay, then it's fairly simple to use. Obviously you can install this however you want. If, if you want to do the manual installation, you can do that yourself, but that's too much effort for me. So we'll just jump through this. So we'll just go none because I don't feel like installing it right now. None and then no because I don't want to install it. Okay, so obviously you would install it yourself. So the first thing we're going to want to do is if you're using PyCom, what you're going to have to do is actually rename your configuration file again. So if you hadn't changed it over, eventually the name Compton.conf was going to get deprecated or it was deprecated, it just hadn't been removed from the code base yet. So the first thing you're going to want to do is actually change your PyCom.conf back to Compton.conf. So I know it's a bit of a hassle, that's the first thing you want to do though. And then the next thing, to actually go and enable Blur, the first thing we have to do is enable transparency. So if you've never done this before, it's a quite simple process. So all you have to do is work out what this window is actually called, and then we can go to the next step. So if you don't know how to do that, you can use a program by the name of Xprop. So let's just bring that one up. So if we run Xprop in here, that will just change my cursor, and then whatever window I click on, it'll basically just print out the details of that window. So in this case, this is an ST window. So if we look in here, it has the class name ST-256 color. Okay, so if we take that name and then come into the Compton file, then the first thing we're going to want to do, so I'll just disable the blur so we can see what it just looks like with transparency. So I'll do that. Okay, so now it's just transparent. So the first thing you're going to want to do is actually set an opacity rule for the windows that you want to have transparency on them. So the way you do this, or at least the way that I do it, is I set the transparency level. I use the class G selector. There's a bunch of different selectors you can use. Class G is 
just the easiest one to use. I would recommend using that. You can use any of them. I'm not going to go into them in this video. If you want to follow along with me, use Class G. If you're using anything else for your transparency or you've already got it set up, then that's all good. And then what you do after that is write equals and then the name of the window class that you want to add transparency to. So I'm adding 90% transparency to Class G ST256 color. So that will add transparency to my ST window. In here, I've also got stuff for EuroXVT, Tabbed, and Kitty. So if I open up Kitty now, it, I know it looks very similar to my ST build, but this is Kitty, as you can see from the terminal right there. Okay, so now that we have transparency enabled, what do we do from here? So if we look in here, I've got a couple of different options in here. So I have enabled blur background, so I've set that to true. I've set my blur method to Kawase. So if you're using that newer fork, the one that's not seven years old, this one right here, the one that is going to eventually be rebased into the main project. So instead of writing Kawase, you would write dual underscore Kawase. It's very similar. That's the only change that you're gonna to have to make if you're using the newer fork. So I'm using the older one, so I'm just gonna be writing Kawase in here. Then you can set the blur strength. So I've got this set to four, but let's just set this at the max of 20. So that's good. And we're gonna to to do a couple other things in here. So if we go further down, we also have to enable the backend GLX. So by default, I believe Compton uses the X render backend. I don't know the difference between the backends, but this is one of the experimental backends that seems to actually be far better for screen tearing as well. And that's just a side benefit. If you happen to be getting screen tearing on your system, switching to GLX seems to pretty much eliminate that, which is awesome. If you still have some screen tearing issues, Here's the rest of the stuff I'm using for GLX. All of that seems to be common settings for actually eliminating screen tearing, but that's not the topic of this video. It's just a nice little side benefit you get if you happen to have that problem as well. So once you've enabled the GLX backend, you have set blur background to true, you've set the blur method to Kawase, and you've set your blur strength. Then if you were to restart your Compton install, and also obviously you've got transparency enabled, if you restart your Compton install, then that'll actually enable the blur. So maybe picking blur strength 20 was a terrible idea because with 90% transparency, it's pretty much impossible to tell there's even any blur on there. So let's just set it something lower, like 10. So if we restart now, now we can see that there's actually some blur there. So you can play around with these settings however you want. So I like it being on about four strength because that, that gives enough blur where I think it looks pretty cool and it's not too much. So I'll restart that again. I think that looks fairly nice. And then I've been playing around with my actual opacity. So I've had some people complain that it's really hard to read the text when I have my compositor installed. And I get that it's difficult because I have a bright background and I was having my opacity a bit lower. But if we say lower this to something like 50 and we'll just see what that looks like. So that's, that's way too transparent for me, but there's maybe something where you actually feel like that's a good idea. Maybe you want to do that to your background windows or something like that. I don't know. There's probably some reason why you'd want to enable transparency that high. But as I said, I like it being around 90. I've been playing around with numbers from 80 to 95-ish, and it's very much gonna be up to your system and your eyes and what sort of background. If you use a dark background and you have a dark terminal theme, you're probably gonna be able to go with less opacity, but it's gonna very much depend on what you're doing. So one thing you might have caught on to is that when we actually enabled blur, this actually completely removed all of our transparency. So all the transparency has now been replaced with blur. So to fix this is actually a fairly simple process. So we have to use a blur background exclude. So this is similar to how you'd be able to exclude things for opacity or how you'd be able to exclude things for fading. So what you have to do is write the exact same sort of format as the opacity rule. So instead of including the actual transparency level in here though, you just completely eliminate that. So you use something like class G or window G or whatever those other selectors are. I'm using class G for today. So class G equals ST256 color. Make sure you also have it within quote marks otherwise it's not gonna work. So you can list out as many windows as you want like this, but if we were to restart like this, we'll see that it actually disables the blur on our ST window, but if we open something like Kitty, for example, that will actually still be blurred. Now, I don't know how well you can actually see that. Maybe if we raise that up a little bit. So just set that to eight. 
That should be much clearer now. So if we look at this, we can see that this has just transparency and this has blur. So this is, as I said, important if you do want to have some windows that are using one or the other. Typically, I just want to use entirely just blur, but it's going to be very much up to you and how you want to actually lay stuff out on your system. Now, one thing I would recommend disabling, especially if you don't like really annoying animations, is fade. So if we were to actually enable fade right now, also it's a little slow on my laptop just because I don't have the most powerful device. So basically, if I was to switch to a different workspace, if I restart, what that's actually going to do is it's going to create some like fading animation as I switch around. For some things it looks cool, but for others I think it's really annoying. So if you look at that, it's a little laggy as well, so I'm not the biggest fan of it. Personally, I'm not a big fan of animations in general though, so I like to disable that. But if you want to like play around with these steps, it actually does look kind of cool if you have a computer that's quick enough to actually run them at this speed. So if we switch that to like 0.1 instead, so if I restart, we look at that. That If your computer's not lagging while you're doing that, I think it might look pretty cool. But as for me, I like to just disable it. So feel free to do whatever you want in your system. If you've got like a Threadripper and some ridiculously powerful NVIDIA card, you can probably run it perfectly fine. But on my weak little laptop, it's, it's, not, as, it's not as easy as that, that's for sure. So I do kind of hope that at some point this will actually be merged into the main project, not the seven-year-old fork, the, uh, the newer one specifically, because there has been a lot of back and forth between the two devs and the latest comment was about a month ago. This was actually talking about the work in progress Dil Kawase branch. So if you want to read through this, as I said earlier, come have a look at this. I think it's a fairly interesting thread to have a look through. And yeah, hopefully at some point we can do this within PyCom. When that actually does happen, I will pin a comment or I'll edit my comment that I usually pin at the start of the video. So have a look for that if you're watching this like two or three months from now, because hopefully by then it'll be in the main project. But for now, you're going to have to use this really old Compton fork or you can build the newer one yourself if you want to. But unless you're using some of the really newer features of Compton and PyCom, really it doesn't matter. You can use this older fork. I've noticed absolutely no problems except for one thing. So this one problem I had is that when I booted up my system and I had my compositor running, my wallpaper completely died. I'll see if I can get a screenshot for it and I'll leave it in the description down below so you can have a look at what it did. But basically you either got, you had one of two situations when it was breaking. You had an entirely black screen, but your cursor still worked. So it's not like you couldn't use it, you just had no wallpaper. The other problem was that it sometimes also just stretched your image out. It didn't actually like ruin on your first screen, but it would just take the last line of colors and stretch that line out across the entire second screen. I'll get a screenshot of it because it looked hilarious. But besides that, as long as you don't care about your wallpaper on your external monitor, it's probably fine to use this really old branch. So I think that's pretty much everything I want to talk about for this video. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it will really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help would be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video is in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got all of my social links. So if you want to chat with me on Discord or you want to see like my Telegram or any of those other platforms, go check those out. I've also got my support link. So if you'd like to support the channel, go check that out. Recently, I've also enabled monetization on my videos. So if you've noticed that ads have been appearing, then that's why. And I guarantee that most of you are probably running ad block anyway. So, hey, that's cool. I'm going to enable ads. If you want to run ad block, that's up to you. But they'll be there in case you do want to disable it for my channel. So lastly, I've also got my alternate video platform. So I've got my BitTube and my library. So if you really don't want to see the ads, feel free to go watch on any of those platforms. And I think that's pretty much everything for me. So I'm out.